In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. And let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desire that with minds made pure, we may attain the festivities of an ending splendor through Christ our Lord. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha, the Omega, all time belongs to him. All and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds. May Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Please face the back. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God.
the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with the light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, Invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy, among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Give them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It 
it is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shot through the Red Sea. This is the night that with the pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, 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 wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, 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 happy fault, that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, 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 truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle a solemn offering, the work of peace, and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, 
drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wet to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity, and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please carefully extinguish your candles and be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these, the last days, has sent his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus, evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. 
God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night, and he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beside them the birds 
of heaven dwell. From among the branches they send forth their song. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, who are wonderful in ordering all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, Both of you stay here with the donkey, while the boy and I go over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon, Abraham took the wood for the holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued. Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out, took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God. 
since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Lord Ire. Hence, people now say, on the mountain, the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heavens and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham father of the nations, as you once swore, grant, we pray, that your people may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them, through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out at me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. 
Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force, a glance that threw it into a panic. And, so, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped, but the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord.
into the sea. The elite of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself. And let us pray. O oh God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in the splendor even of our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the water of rebirth, Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become the children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife married in youth and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you, but with great tenderness, I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath, for a moment, I hid my face from you, but with enduring love, I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. 
This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken says the Lord, who has mercy on you. O afflicted one, storm-battered and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelians and your foundations in sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies your gates of carbuncles, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In justice shall you be established, far from the fear of oppression where destruction cannot come near you. The word of the Lord.
and let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledge to the patriarchs by the reason of their faith, and through sacred adoption increase you the children of your promise, so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, your church may now see in great part fulfilled through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? your wages for what fails to satisfy. Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander of nations. So shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Make known his 
steeds proclaim how exalted is his And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the netherworld? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Had you walked in the way of God, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding, that you may know also where are length of days and life, where light of the eyes and peace. Who has found the place of wisdom? Who has entered into her treasuries? The one who knows all things knows her. He has probed her by his knowledge. The one who established the earth for all time and filled it with four-footed beasts. He who dismisses the light and it departs, calls it and it obeys him, trembling. Before whom the stars at their posts shine and rejoice. When he calls them, they answer, here we are, shining with joy for their maker. Such is our God. No other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant, to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God, the law that endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light toward splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. The word of the Lord.
The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life, of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are Rejoicing the heart, the command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. constantly increase your church by your call to the nations graciously grant to those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection through Christ our Lord A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them. Because of the blood that they poured out on the ground, and because they defiled it with idols, I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name. Because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned, among the nations where they came. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name 
profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Yes. 
And let us pray. O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of your whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation, which you planned from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what had become old is made new, and all the things are restored to the integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever A reading from the epistle, blessed Paul the Apostle, to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? 
we were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark. (laughs) 
When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early, when the sun had risen on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will, ro who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolling back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold, the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. He is risen, amen? Amen. Amen. And we have come to a celebration that stands apart in our entire church's celebration in our liturgical year, a celebration that stands apart. Huh? It is the moment we acknowledge that he has risen. And what is so much a distinction is of its solemnity, it's the nature of it, and the power of it is that what gets imputed through the church's life, the 2,000 year history of that, is that what the resurrection stands for. What it stands for. It is God's yes. It is God's yes. God the Father said yes. Now, what is the question that he's saying yes to? Simply put, to giving us a second chance. To giving us a second chance by the very life of his son. That is how we can so sing, oh, happy fall. Now, we don't sing that. Father Rafino sang that, but thank God Father Rafino sang that. <laughs> that wasn't that funny, okay? <laughs> But we have been given a second chance. And what does that mean? Very recently, there has been a social media controversy. There's a shocker. Um, but somebody has taken offense, or some people have taken offense, to the usage of Christ the King. Christ the King is offensive. And why would that be offensive? Well, you know, if we look at modernity, if we look at, the, if we look at modernity and the modern man, again, maybe that usage finds itself to be offensive. But the problem is not Christ being king. The problem is in modern man. And one thing about modernity is that modern man wears a mask. Wears a mask that says... I get it all together, I got control of my situation, I got control of my environment, I'm free, I can do what I want, we can subdue this earth. But none of that's really true. As I say, it's a mask, and underneath, people are walking around with a great deal of hurt. People walk around this earth with a great deal of hurt, huh? with regrets that they can't even articulate anymore, with bitterness where they can't even remember why they're so bitter or how they even come to this point, but living in this bitterness. Some with soul-crushing loneliness that they're so isolated and so alone that they may be in a crowd and still feel like Others with just a sense of meaningless towards their life, 
and their being. And this is modern man. This is the modern man who takes offense at Christ the King. But the whole of his coming, the whole of his reason, the whole of God's desire, the Father's desire, is to give us a second chance. It begins in, very, in salvation history. It begins in all the readings that we heard tonight. Huh? Look at the ancient world, how brutal it was. A man goes up the mountain with his son, puts a knife to his son's throat, comes back down to the mountain, and they live happily ever after. When have you heard that? A whole people has left another nation. Their back is against the wall. They're at the basin of this sea with one of the most powerful armies on the earth at that time coming at them. Next thing we know, they're on the other side and the army is no more. When have you ever heard that? It's the second chances. Second chances. Into the words of the prophet, huh? I will create into you a new heart. Take away your stony heart. We're going to start over here, okay? All those things that are on your heart, the bitterness, the resentment, the anger, the hatred, the desire to do harm, all of that, I'm going to change. And so we come to the gospel. The gospels are nothing but a litany of second chances. And what is so striking about these second chances is how insurmountable everything is. How insurmountable these problems are that these people are bringing. Huh? And people get these second chances. Sometimes they, they reach out with great desperation. The woman reaching out for the hem of the garment. The woman caught in adultery who doesn't even say a word gets a second chance. Sometimes it's for people who didn't even know they were looking for a second chance. The woman at the well. There she encounters Jesus. Now she's back with her people. She's leading him, them to him and he's making it new. Other times, they don't know they need a second chance. They get a second chance and still don't know it. The wedding feast of Cana. And the water is made wine. There's no embarrassment. There's no anything. And sometimes it's mind-boggling how far out of his way Jesus goes. He goes to the, the, the Gadarenes. Remember that story? Across the sea, they encounter a storm. They get there. This man possessed by legions. I don't know how many are in a legions, but thousands of demons. I mean, what does that even look like? This is insurmountable. A minute and a half later, the man's asking, hey, can I come with you? And Jesus says, go back with your friends. This is your second chance at life to live it right and live it well. And again, the gospel is just lined with these stories of second chances. This is our Lord, this is our God. And what can we say about that? What is striking? What is striking in the gospel is there's one person who doesn't get a second chance. Now, maybe your first thought is Judas. But in truth, my belief is, oh, he did get a second chance. And probably more than that. The fact that he was at the table after being notoriously known as a thief might tell you something in all of this story. But still, even with that aside, there's still one person that never got a second chance. And the biting irony of that is that it was Jesus. What did we celebrate on Good Friday? What did we celebrate that day? He 
didn't get a second chance. They offered Pilate. <laughs> you can't tell me there's a guy that offers second chances, but he did. <laughs> Pilate said, Barabbas or this man. If ever there was a moment for a second chance, there it was. But there it wasn't. Didn't get a second chance. The irony of that is, is striking. But there we are. The, it brought us to this moment where we celebrate that the singular work of God alone, there was no mediation, there was no moment, there was no integrity of the human person that reached out and made this happen. It was God the Father alone. And what is he saying to us in this? From Good Friday to what we celebrate now, what is he saying to us? I know how bad you can be. I know the wickedness you can do. I know how wrong things can go. I know how bad you can make this world. But none of that is an excuse for my yes. I am still going to say yes here, even to what you've done to my son. And the very moment of the resurrection is the yes, and the yes is out and running. We get to the tomb today, the two or three women that arrive at this tomb are greeted by an angel. Go tell the brothers to go to Galilee. As he said, he will meet them there. Now, there's the second chance. The disciples who went to the four corners when all this was going down, as we know the story, the first thing that we incur is a second chance to come back. Please come back. It's all right. I love you. The first thing he does is call them back. The first thing he does is want them close to him. The first thing he does is heal the wounds of this defection. The second thing he does is breathe upon them to empower them to give everybody else a second chance. To, to anoint them with a spirit of forgiveness that makes all the difference in the world, that changes your life in that moment. The breath of life is the breath of love, is the breath of forgiveness. And the power of this resurrection empowers that anew. And it brings us back to modernity. Where is everybody in this? Because so many people out there, maybe so many people here, live in a desperation to be healed, to be given a second chance. If you're walking on this earth, you need a second chance. You may disguise it, you may hide it, you may, may wear the mask, but the truth is, you need that second chance. And the reality of this night is that and then some. That God the Father spared nothing to give us his yes to the question of do we give them a second chance? And the offense that Christ the King that modernity finds is because they don't want to look close enough at their own lives. Because this is a king that gives his life from here to that altar. This is a king that longs to forgive, that longs to heal, that longs to reconcile, that longs to renew, that longs to impart his life from here to you and to make you new.
Who doesn't need a second chance? Who doesn't need this kind of forgiveness? That is our king. That is the one. That is who we come to this night. He has spared nothing. He has loved us to the end. And he brings that love to fulfillment through the power of this resurrection. The last word of the New Testament is, Behold, I make all things new. That's not talking about the real estate out there. That's not talking about things around us. That's talking about you and me. Behold, I make all things new. That's his thesis statement. That's his way. That is his outcome. This day, God the Father has said yes to us. The question for us is, what are we going to do with that? How are we going to receive it and take it out to a world that's in dire need to receive that? This is a night of joy. This is a night where the promises of God have been fulfilled. This is a night where, behold, I make all things new. My dear friends, let us pray to Almighty God for our brother and sister Bennett and Christelle, who are asking for baptism. He has called them and brought them to this moment. May he grant them light and strength to follow Christ with resolute hearts and to profess the faith of the church. May he give them the new life of the Holy Spirit, whom we are about to call down on this water. Stephen, pray for us. Have mercy, Jesus, our 
present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the blessing of the water. Thank you for O God, who by invisible power accomplished a wondrous effect through the sacramental signs, who in many ways have prepared water your creature to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come to end to vice and the beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea so that the chosen people set free from the slavery of Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit and hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood. 
and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from the, all the squalor of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. of water, bless the Lord, praise Him, exalt Him above all forever. Springs of water, bless the Lord, praise Him, exalt Him above all forever. I now invite Christelle and Bennett to make a profession of faith. So I ask you, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? May the strength of Christ the Savior protect you as a sign of this. I anoint you with the oil of salvation in the same Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. May the strength of Christ our Savior protect you as a sign of this I anoint you with the oil of salvation in the same Christ our Lord who lives and reigns forever and ever Christelle do you believe in God the Father Almighty the creator of heaven and earth I do do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. Christelle, please join me at the font. Christelle, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
And Bennett, so I ask you, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? I do. Bennett, I ask you, please join me at the font. Bennett, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Christelle and Bennett, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. Receive, therefore, the white garments and bring it unstained before the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you may have eternal life. Amen. Come forward, God, Father and God, Mother, that you may hand on the light to the newly baptized. You have been made light in Christ. Walk always as children of the light, that pre preserving in faith you may run to meet the Lord when he comes, and with all the saints in the heavenly court.
ask you to please stand for the renewal of the baptismal promises. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the holy Catholic Church. And so now I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried and rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who's given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Please extinguish your candles. Here we go. Via qua e credientem te tem emplo
Rebecca and Gabriel, since after mature deliberation in, holy, in the Holy Spirit and of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. I, I now invite you to come forward and in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. I believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims as revealed by God. The Lord, Rebecca, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. In his mercy, he has led you here so that in the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith you have professed before this, his family. I believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims as revealed by God. Gabriel, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. In his mercy, he has led you here so that in the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith you have professed before this, his family. My dear friends, finally, we also celebrate the Sacrament of Confirmation, not only for the newly baptized, but also with the permission of Bishop Bradley for some brothers and sisters who were previously baptized as Catholics, but who have not yet received confirmation. Candidates for confirmation, please come forward with your godparents and sponsors. Dear candidates for confirmation, you have been born again in Christ and have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring among us of the Holy Spirit, who was sent by the Lord upon the apostles at Pentecost to be given by them for their successors to be baptized. Therefore, you are to receive the promised power of the Holy Spirit, so that, being more perfectly conformed to Christ, you may bear witness to the Lord's passion and resurrection and, come and become active members of the church and for the building up of the body of Christ in faith and charity. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon these candidates for confirmation, to confirm them with his abundant gifts, and through his, his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Therese, 
Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Augustine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Francis, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Gianna Mola, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. John Paul, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church on this Easter vigil, that the people of God may shine with light on the risen Christ before the whole world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Franciscan University family, that we continue to live in fidelity to the church, especially by being faithful to the Holy Mass and the sacraments, giving witness to the power of the resurrection of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Franciscan TOR fa father, friars, especially those serving at this university, that they would be given the grace of the Holy Spirit to fulfill the mission of Christ in the life of our students. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our newly baptized and all brought into full communion with the church this night, that their life in Christ would be filled with his grace, giving them the fullness of peace and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world that the risen Christ, whose peace surpasses all understanding, would bring an end to war and strife among the nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and all who are suffering in our community, that the Lord who has risen will grant them a renewal and hope and healing in his love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, that by the power of the risen Lord they may enter into the fullness of his eternal glory this night. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we come before you this day honoring your name. We give you thanks for Jesus, who is our second chance. Lord, we thank you and bless you for his resurrection, which lives in us this night. 
Be with us always, protect us from evil, and lead us your eternal kingdom. We ask this as always through Christ our Lord.
and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Except we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with all the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic 
and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, granting them the forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with his eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the ch this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as you once were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, then in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. 
Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, through those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Father Salah, peace be with you. 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 Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace be with you. Peace Thank you. Thank you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
spirit of your love and in kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart through christ our lord Amen. so um just want to say thank you um first of all to our newly baptized those who've come into the full communion and those who are have been confirmed tonight we're very thankful for your yes Also, just, I just want to fill you in on something. Um, Rebecca and Gabriel uh, contacted me about six weeks ago, maybe eight weeks ago, to enter into the Catholic Church. They were from the Orthodox faith, and they came into the Catholic Church tonight. So just uh, mother and son. And, you know, first uh, Gabriel contacted me, and then shortly after that his mom contacted me to come out to enter into our Catholic faith. Isn't that beautiful? I mean... Yeah, and a special thanks to, uh, to Becca McHugh, who runs the whole operation there and kind of keeps everything uh, going, organizes the teaching, and uh, just, just does an outstanding job. Thank you, Becca. <laughs> and just going quickly, I want to thank my liturgy committee uh you know i can't say enough about them let's set aside the part where they just put up with me all the time and just get into the real that they organize all of this and you know while everybody else is with their family and friends and you know celebrating they're here putting this all together so i'm very thankful isaiah thank you for your direction here I'm thankful for them, but also thankful to our events workers. They really also another behind the scenes crew. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so. And just lastly, uh, 
on behalf of Father Dave, all the friars, thank you guys for being here tonight. Thank you for your, your part in this community, your support, your love, your friendship, and your just belonging here. Uh, we're just so thankful. We thank